Joe Morris Thatkin's engagement with art making is an aggressive articulation of metaphor and analysis, dissecting the global political landscape, historical phenomena, contemporary society, and its circumstances. He received his MFA at Boston University, where he was awarded the Jack Kramer Award and the Esther B. and Albert S. Kahn Award. Currently, Statkin lives in New York. He has taught at Columbia University and is currently teaching at Pratt Institute. Um, instead of showing a lot of my previous work, I thought to show two projects that I'm kind of in the middle of now um, that are really close to me and fresh on my mind, and I can tell you a little bit about that. Um, but just a, a quick intro to it. Um, my work deals with a lot of things from painting, printmaking, drawing, more conceptual work, more socially engaging work, um, and, and it kind of moves in and out of all of those things. Um, these are some prints and light boxes and drawings and paintings that I've done in the past. Um, in this particular case, I was working a lot with installation and where things were placed and kind of addressing the viewer and the audience um, in many ways, and that kind of leads into these two projects that I'm in the, in the middle of now. We can go to the next one, thank you. Um, this is a project called This Red Door that um, actually just ended, but it was up for three and a half months. Um, it's in the East Village, and it was a short-term uh, space that myself and two other artists had. And we entered the space, and normally it's been used as a traditional studio space. Artists will go in there and do some work and then have an open studio at the end. Um, instead, we decided to make it more of a discursive space, more of an open space, where we set up a table, we brought our books, um, we supplied Wi-Fi to people, we invited artists, we had events, um, we had readings, we had artist talks, and um, we basically made it open to the public. And it was street level, and so people could come in, <laughs> just hang out, look at the work, and talk. And um, a lot of times, uh, it just went late, late at night, and people would just come in, look at, look at artwork, and we'd just sit down and talk. Um, you can go to the next one. This is kind of the setup there. Um, what we started doing was inviting different artists to come in, and ins they'd install their work, and it would go up, and it'd start to build on the wall in a kind of salon style. And um, instead of having like a traditional opening for them, we'd have instead a, like a round table, informal round table discussion. So we'd invite the artists to come in, sit down, it's open to the public, people come in and have them talk about the work and then just have people ask questions and have a discussion out of it. You can go to the next one. It's another view of the space. You can go to the next one. This is uh, just an event that we had. Um, every time there'd be all different people coming in and we kind of, in about three and a half months, we were realizing at the end we had invited and asked to participate over 100 artists. And um, we had a, like 30 to 40 events, um, anything from screenings to performances to readings. Yeah, next one. This is a reading that we had. Uh, a singing performance. This is another artist discussion. A couple artists are on the left, and slowly everything started filling up on the walls. The walls would just get covered. So any artist that came into the space that participate that would participate would leave their work, and it would just start filling the space. This was a this was part of a performance we had, which was a, a crazy performance called Sunday Brunch where we invited 30 to 40 performance artists, and we started at midnight, and they went back to back to back all the way till noon the next day. So it was this kind of marathon of a performance night. Um, we were lucky enough to have Kara Walker actually came and, and spoke too, and she, a lot of it was interesting because it really got um, kind of political and invested. There was a lot of debate that went on and people felt really comfortable in the space where it was kind of a, uh, a sort of thing where someone had said, oh, it's the kind of discussion that goes on here in a place that you normally have like after you go to an opening and you go to a bar with your friends and then you talk to each other and you say the real things you think. But we actually created a space where people felt comfortable enough to actually discuss with the artists in front of the work um, with a group of people, which was really great. And so this was a, a great discussion. Kara 
had set up and we talked to her about, um, and she called it Occupy Kara Walker, and she addressed this topic of her being an art star and her having any responsibility, if any, to like other generations of artists and what that means. And so she was really open to kind of challenge herself and, and, and where she was positioned in the art world. We had another artist, Zephyr Throwell, who um, was part of this Wall Street um, ocular patient project that he did. And he came in and, and screened the first part of it um, there with us. We also built a stage at one point in the space, and we had performers come, and we had a whole weekend of um, uh, performances, DJs, pirate radio that kind of went throughout, and we had a hip-hop group come in as well, and they um, did an open mic thing where people off the street could come in and rap and do different things, and we also had all these different performers come and do, do, do sets. This was one of the... Um, the hip hop groups that we had. And they did a thing called the Vocal Booth where they were originally started it in bed in Brooklyn, but we, um, we were friends with them and asked them to come and do it here and they just involved the public to come in and participate. Okay, that's now onto another project that I'm actually right in the middle of now. Um, so it's kind of awkward to talk about, but I can give you an idea of it. Um, Basically, it starts like this. This is an abstract painting that I've done uh, about five or six years ago. It's, it's pretty small, and it's really heavily painted. I painted on it for a bunch of years, um, so it's really thick. Uh, I used an application by Google called Google Goggles, which is on your phone. You can take pictures of like paintings or objects or text or something, and it tries to find it on the web and identify it for you. Um, in this case, I used it to take a picture of my abstract painting. It naturally can't find it on the web, um, but it tries to come up with all these things it thinks it could be. Um, and it comes up with the craziest things from people's dogs to chickens to <laughs> religious imagery to political Im imagery. Um, and basically, I've done that, and I've collected all those images. Um, you can go to the next one, maybe. This is like one of the images that came up off of that painting. Um, and then collecting all those, I'd collect the information, the websites they came from. And then um, to kind of turn it a little further, I then would take those images and send them to a reproduction painting factory in China and have them make them into paintings, oil paintings again. So this is, you can go to the next. That's one of the paintings that came back from China. Um, and I did that for a whole bunch of them, and I've been collecting them, and they're becoming part of a larger project, um, which you can go to the next one. And so those are a lot of the paintings that are coming back. Um, I'll get them and, um, and stretch them, and so they're ex the exact same size as the, the abstract painting. Um, there's a couple weird, it kind of gets into some politics and some exploitation and some labor and copyright and authorship, and I'm kind of looking at that and kind of trying to expose a lot of that in my practice. Um, in this particular case, the, the kind of, uh, a little bit of a twisted part of this is how much these cost. And so to get one of these paintings um, back from China, painted, everything, shipping included is, uh, in 10 days, is $30. Um, and so it, it's a wild thing, but the, the jobs they have there to do this are actually considered like decent jobs, um, which, is, which is the crazy part of it. Um, another part of it to address like the, the authorship, even as, as me as the artist or them as the artist, or are we really collaborating or something? Um, at one point I asked them, is there any way the artist can sign and date the backs of the paintings? And they were like, oh yes, yes, of course. Um, what name would you like us to sign? <laughs> And so I was like, wow, that's, that's crazy. Um, well, sign my name. And so on the backs of all these paintings are different signatures of my name, which is kind of another piece in itself. Um, you can go to the next one. These are, I've developed this relationship with this painting factory, and so they've actually been so excited about kind of the work I'm doing, blah, 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 and they're, they would document everything for me as they're painting the paintings, and... Um, and these are some of those pictures. You can go to the next one. Yeah. And then the next 
Um, the project I'm doing now actually takes it a little further again where I'm collecting these paintings and I'm photographing them. Um, these are a bunch of the paintings photographed, but then I'll use my computer, put them in Photoshop, and make them into halftones. So I'll gray them, make them into pixels and halftones um, as if I was going to silk screen them. That would be the process for silk screening. Um, I would silk screen them and then at the same time put them through a, a program that changes image to sound. And I'll wrap that up. Basically, then I'll play the images. Um, by their pixels, and they come out as beats. You can flip one more, and then, and then one more after that. And that's this is kind of a, a image for what's going to happen in the in the project I'm working on. That's it. Thank you.